Yeah, talking through our intro. Jeez. So you didn't tell me you were going to start the intro. I didn't, because I was, didn't want to talk during starting the intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I and then I would have defeated, I would have talked happening. during my own intro then. <laughs> like, well, that's why I was being quiet. I realized that I stopped talking. It's <laughs> oh, funny, uncoordinated there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Darcy. Good morning, Justin. Oh, I forgot. Somebody on. Unless it's you. What? Nothing. I just said concurrent viewer. Yeah. Oh. I was like, there might be somebody out there. Who knows? So we're starting a little early today. Yep. Oh, well, and it's uh, showing. And it's showing? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I forgot, I have no recollection of how some of the setups happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking during intros and you're not telling me that we're starting. <laughs> well, we were late, so I was just yeah. assuming that your <laughs> silence knew that we were starting because we were late. <laughs> that was all. Uh, yeah. Usually when I try to get the screen up to our page. Yep. We're here now. Right, it's mostly me, I guess. Well, yep, here we are. Not too talky today. Not very walkie talkie. Not walkie talkie. No? Does anybody have anything exciting that they want to see or talk about? I know that there were some programmers out there that maybe wanted to ask questions, but I'm not sure if that. Uh, there are one viewer right now. <laughs> <laughs> people are spreading the word about our channel, and um, there's there's people actually interested in learning real programming stuff. What? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Here. I I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they read the title very well. Yeah, they want to be pretenders. We don't teach programming, we just teach you how to pretend. Yep. Well, that's half the battle, I guess. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what do you want to talk about today? Um, I don't know. I'm interested in salamanders. Salamanders? I'm curious what that's all about. My mom collects salamanders all the time. She does? Just, mm -hmm. like, from the yard? Yeah, she collects them from the yard. Puts them in a prison, keeps them there for a while while they carry out their sent or life sentence. <laughs> their life sentence. That's awesome. Yeah, she takes hey. them into her class, I think. Oh, yeah. I we I only see one salamander around here. <laughs> one? The the same one? Your dogs haven't well, ate I it. I feel like no, they're too fast. Oh. Um, I mean, they've gotten a couple lizards over the years, but yeah, for the most part. Uh, no, we have a, well, it's not a salamander. It's a blue-tailed snake. <laughs> it looks like a salamander. <laughs> I just realized. I was like, I was just about to say what it was, and I was like, oh, wait, that's not a salamander. It's just another lizard. Do you guys have salamanders down there? I don't think so. It's possible, but I've never seen. Um, the blue-tailed skink looks like a salamander, but that's. The closest one that I've seen to uh, a real salamander here. Why is he gaming? In Washington, What's... we had some. They're cool looking. But we have geckos and uh, other lizards. Craig's our mystery person. Good morning, Craig. Yeah, but he's not Oh, he's attention. gaming. He's like, I'm not really listening. Well, if he could respond, he actually, that's listening for him. <laughs> I guess he can multitask. He thinks he can. <laughs> we know he's really focusing on gaming. Yep. What game are you playing? I can tell, but I'm just going to ask. Because it says it on Discord. <laughs> oh. Let me guess. I'm guessing. I'm not looking. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it's Fortnite. He hasn't, he hasn't responded, so I'm going to cheat. Well. 
Yeah. Or he doesn't like. Um, He's playing Fortnite. He like... <laughs> I just saw. I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it. He probably is in the middle of something. He's got his hands on the controller and can't type. See, not able to multitask. I need to tell, yep. Rude. tell his work about that. Not when he's listening. That when he's listening to his shows, he can't multitask with his work. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Let's see what these salamanders can do. The secrets of California skydiving salamanders revealed by researchers. Oh. Well, they're no longer secrets. They're so cute. I like that it's got spots on its eyes, too. A new study is shedding fresh light into the incredible world of California's temperate forests and daring survival techniques of one of its inhabitants, parachuting salamanders. A study published on a day, <laughs> Monday, I was going to say Monday, I don't know if it was this week. <laughs> the 25th, yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, how, wait, see, uh, I hate this, because, okay. So this article was published on Wednesday. Oh, never mind. I'm just dumb. I don't know my dates. I was thinking it was that the 25th was this week. <laughs> Wednesday. I was like, how? I was like, that is this week. Yeah. And I was like, we put this title up like a week ago. How in the world was it on Monday? <laughs> That's what I was like. I was going to go on this rant of how I hate these articles recycling stuff. And then come to find out it's like June 4th. <laughs> yeah nah, my bad my bad sorry Catherine <laughs> yep. sorry so sorry so yep, yes the sorry. study yep. published actually the Monday of whenever the article was written on the 25th <laughs> a couple of weeks ago yeah a couple of weeks ago so um in current biology so I guess they couldn't have the name current biology if it wasn't current <laughs> so um Shows how salamanders living in the canopy are able to parachute consistently, slowing their speed and controlling their movements. Yeah. I would That's think cool. so. Enough practice, you'd be able to do it. Salamanders aren't exactly known for their agility and their dexterity. People associate them with rotting logs, streams. Okay. I want to see how they parachute. It feels weird. Yeah. There's no okay. videos? They're just yeah, there's nothing. So we're going to have to visualize this. Let's see. The amphibians are lungless. They breathe air through their skin and tissue surrounding their mouth. I did not know that. Me neither. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Wow. I'm an eggplant. Wonder... I wonder if that's how I get my air tube. <laughs> Through your skin? Don't have lungs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you need air. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> you know, I think you're just breathing just for the motion of it. I don't yeah, so I don't, I don't want to feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Just like in the Matrix where you eat just to make it seem like it's part of the mm -hmm. you know, your real day-to-day -day thing, but you really don't need to. Yep. Um, unlike other species, they used they used two feet instead of one. What? What? They jump with two feet. Okay, cool. They don't take off as quickly in a horizontal way, hitting at something, hinting at something. Jumping with less power might be contributing to stability after the jump. It's better to be control in control after the jump than to really jump power to ah. After the jump, then to jump really powerfully. I don't know if I still like that word organization, but whatever. After all, if you're going to jump from the world's tallest trees, you'll need to parachute and glide. To test their skydiving activities, Brown put the five inch long salamanders into tiny wind tunnels. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a visualization. Your picture, if we would have read that line, your picture would have been totally different. <laughs> I know, but they would have had little goggles. and. Yep, like, yep, that's exactly <laughs> it. It's like their faces kind of peeled back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been kind of cool. Yeah, maybe for SMGs, I'll just 
draw one up like that. It could always be a future NFT that we never make. Um, <laughs> the same type so that we you might. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> An NFT that we're going to keep saying will come out, we promise. Well, Craig's got his. Oh, yeah. I got mine, too. And you yeah. got yours. And I got mine. Okay. So three out of 20 ain't bad. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. They, they were all tests, by the way, everyone. <laughs> like in the yeah, test network, and they weren't even on the real <laughs> network. Yeah, the, so yeah, don't think I you're know, missing I out. That, I was like, uh, I know we need to get back on that. But yeah, one of these days. There's been a lot going on. We're very Has there? Has there really? Has there really been a lot going on? Um. Yeah. Maybe for like, you. Um, I've just been sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Well, okay. I'm sure that takes a lot of energy. It does. My wrist hurts so bad. The salamander I move huh, what <laughs> i twiddle all day i mean my hands hurt at the end of the day <laughs> it's actually for the mouse but still same thing yeah. um how do they the salamanders move their bodies and limbs to slow their descent successfully slowing the velocity by 10 percent? that doesn't seem like enough to hit something i'd want to be like 50 percent slower <laughs> they dropped three other species of salamanders into wind tunnels. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the wandering salamanders slowed themselves down the best. I'm just thinking of these ones. They're like, what the hell is this crap? <laughs> like, I don't exactly fall from trees. <laughs> yeah, I swim. I walk along the ground. <laughs> what are you guys doing to me? They also pump their tails and move their limbs to change direction. It just kind of seems like they're, they've they learned how to flail themselves better than others. Yep. Yeah, it does. I see squirrels doing this a lot. Like getting up really high in the trees and then jumping to a different tree. But they're squirrels. Yeah, but maybe that's where the salamanders learned. Got the that. idea? Yeah. They were talking to some squirrels, and the squirrels like, ah, it's easy. I was like, oh. this squirrel was probably like, I'm out of here. This place is lame. <laughs> it's a bunch of salamanders. And he took off. And then one salamander was like, um, this is lame. And then followed. Yeah, you definitely, Craig, you should mind. <laughs> Your computer is on all the time. So now squirrels and salamanders are friends or are no. acquaintances? Yeah, it's probably something like, um, I don't know why. The first thing I thought of was Heathers. I'm sure there's a newer movie <laughs> reference, <laughs> but just like, you know, the nerdy girl wanting to hang out with a cool uh, girl and then blowing up the school instead. I don't know. I'm trying to think of. Is a salamander cooler than a rat? That's what a squirrel is. It's just a land rat. Yeah. Rat. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm less impressed with the salamanders now. I still think they're cute. Oh, they're cute, but uh, anything can fling itself from one tree to the next and kind of flail I mean, itself along. Well, not really. There was at least two other kinds of salamanders. <laughs> <laughs> that is true that is true two other two other groups were like well we couldn't figure it out so they're like we don't want to play this game anymore just just fall and then they'll let us go <laughs> just fall and they'll let us go <laughs> yeah but that fall could hurt <laughs> they didn't say how tall that wind tunnel was yeah that's true All right. well it can't be that big it'd be hard to watch them if you're it's like, probably it was wow, just small. that one fell in 0 0.01 seconds. <laughs> the other one was 0 0.02. They did way better the second day. So, ants. Get rid of this big old thing. How ants inspired a new way to measure snow with space lasers. There's a whole lot of weirdness in that title. Yeah, there's a lot of words that don't make sense together. Yeah, ants, snow, and space lasers. And measurements. And measuring. 
New way makes sense. Okay, I get that and house, but. Well, yeah, we need those. <laughs> <laughs> we need the how and the new part. Uh, so photons wander through snow like ants through a nest. That inspired a clever new NASA technique for measuring the fluffy stuff from orbit. I love the way that people think. What a, like, I want to meet the person that had this idea first. <laughs> like, I want to know how their brain works. <laughs> that is, that's awesome. Well, his name's Yang Yang Hu. He's a NASA physicist. So, ants of a, as a group are creatures of habit. While an individual's path isn't certain, biologists who spend a long time watching the behavior of entire colonies can predict the average time any one ant might wander around underground before resurfacing. That got NASA physicist. That got NASA physicist Yong Yang Hu, 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 maybe, wondering if the same predictability might be true of photons, particles of light traveling through the snowpack. If so, that would let scientists use a laser pulse from an orbiting satellite to estimate snow depth. Potentially a powerful new way to monitor water supplies and the health of sea ice in the Arctic. Yeah, makes complete sense, actually. Yeah. Now that it's explained out like that. Yeah. <laughs> so there are why, you know, I'm curious on why they, why there's a me measured time, like a predictable time. How in the world do you come up with that? Um, so some satellite equipped with LiDAR, the same variety of laser system that self-driving cars use to build 3D maps. This extremely sensitive instrument fires trillions upon trillions of photons at the Earth, then analyzes what bounces back to the satellite. Because scientists know the speed of light, they can use the LiDAR to determine altitude. A photon that bounces off the top of a mountain will take slightly less time to reach the satellite than a photon that bounces off the valley, uh, off a valley floor. The same thing happens when you shoot LiDAR into a snowbank. We can measure that distance of each individual photon traveling inside the snow. Some photons may go tens or even hundreds of feet deep into the snowpack before coming to the surface and heading back to the satellite. The photons penetrate the snow as a beam instead of spraying out laterally. The image, imagine a way a laser shot through a cloud of smoke looks like a single line. A photon's path is not always simple. It's just as an ant wanders around its underground colony, a photon shot from a space laser takes quite a random route through the snow. A few will travel all the way to the underlying soil and reflect off of it before they come back above ground. Some bounce back midway through after hitting snow particles. Most of them go inches into the snow and come back. But then there are a lot of them that go very deep very long distances trapped inside the snow, bouncing back and forth. All that ricocheting around makes for noisy data. But within it, there's a pattern. Just as there is in the way groups of ants in the aggregate move around a colony. While each photon takes an erratic path, scientists can mathematically represent the average distance that each travels. Team calculated on average, a photon travels twice as far as the depth of snow it's moving through. Huh. Once they had that formula, the team can estimate snow depth all over the planet using global LiDAR from its ISAT-2. They then compared those estimates to snow depth measurements in the same areas taken by airplanes using radar. A third op is inserting special poles yeah, poles into the snow. They all compare very well. Special. Huh? I wonder what makes them special. <laughs> they have tape on them. They're just marked. <laughs> I already know. I've seen them before. <laughs> well, maybe not the ones these sci like NASA scientists are using, but I've seen the ones they use to measure snow at uh, ski resorts. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I figured it was something just like a pole with lines on it. Yeah, it's got um, it's got glitter on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little party. Sweet. Got some ribbons. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Craig was really focused on making sure he was in our stream to get rid of his uh, friends. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because he's he's learned that it's uh, counterproductive. You know, he, he gets paid for our channel, but then we don't pay him if he lets anybody in. So then he can't get paid from his other friends. So he's decided that we're cooler than the bad people. <laughs> That's what happened. So now he's here. Yeah. So now he protects us. Although he's saying that he doesn't, it sounds like he doesn't know that he's got his NFT. Maybe that's why he's not answering. Yeah, didn't answer when you asked what game he was playing. <laughs> like, I haven't gotten paid yet. I haven't gotten paid. Oh, was that his payment in NFTs? Well, good thing. We're, we're just saving his money right now. Because, yeah. you know, with the market being down and everything. Yep. We don't want him to lose money value on his NFTs, yeah. and then and then somebody could steal it too. You know, we're just we're protecting it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I like that. So let's see, fifty six, and what do we got? We got kangaroo coming up next. Bats. Let's take a break now. Okay. We got an early break today. I like it. Oh, he's it. looked. He looked at what? He looked in our chat? What, what did you look at? Maybe he looked in his wallet. He looked in his wallet? No, don't look in your wallet! <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a bored ape named Fred Simeon? Oh, you'd be in big trouble. If no, you wouldn't actually. Well, maybe. We're still trying to figure out if receiving this receiving stolen, stolen property, yeah. Mm -hmm. Your MetaMask I think somebody stole it from you. Yeah, that's the only logical explanation. You got fished. Sad. I'm sorry. Wow, that thing was pretty valuable, too. It was one of a kind. It was the only one. Well, I guess we'll have yep. to track it down. I made it special. Yeah, it had his name on it, right? It was to our biggest fan, Craig. <laughs> to our biggest fan. And then now we're going to get him in a fight. Him and Grandma are going to be fighting. Good job. <laughs> we got to drum up some um, controversy. For our yeah. Show. Yeah. We got to get, we got to get like a YouTube fight going on. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in a few minutes. Yep. Turn on some music. Oh, wait. Oh, I broke the music.
So do you think your work friend will join on a Saturday? Or is that only a Wednesday thing? <laughs> what a different view. I get disconnected. You got disconnected? I did. Disconnected. Right, right when I was trying to get back on. But that's not unusual. So. What were you disconnected from? Discord. Why? I don't know. Oh. It just said you've been disconnected, and I was like, oh boy. That was just. And not then very nice. it came back on, and then I was like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> right oh. like that. <laughs> huh. Yep. It's like it's like I didn't get disconnected at all. Wow! Just like magic. You know, I learned something about Discord the other day. Discord's What's that? quite an evil company. Uh oh, why? They got a majority owner of a company called Tencent. And there's conspiracy theories about that. So, it's interesting. About that company or the. Company? About that company. Yeah, about that company. And then, um, <laughs> it was like a whole, like, expose on the person that created Discord and stuff. Uh, well, expose. We'll just say it was a story. <laughs> I don't know if you can believe things are true or not, but um, he, they sell. They, he sells our data. <laughs> I'm like, it was just like, what company doesn't? <laughs> yeah. It was just kind of at the yeah. end. But, yeah, it was just like, I guess this ten cent company isn't like the most trustworthy company, and they're going around buying stakes, um, large stakes in like social media. Like ribeyes and stuff huh? like that? Like ribeyes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll say that kind of stakes. You know, percentage of ownerships. I think they own 40% of Discord or something like that. They're really interesting, though. Because they were talking, and, and how Discord um, turned down Microsoft for like a $10 billion buy. And they're like, they don't make money. And they turn down people trying to buy them. What's going on over there? And they and they offer their service for free. Like they have like an insane amount of users, it sounds like. Interesting. It was. I'm trying to not get too um into the conspiracy side of it. So you'll have to you'll have to find your own information. Because we try not to promote things here that we don't believe or we try not to promote anything at all here <laughs> <laughs> no we try to promote reading that's what we promote finding information and learning, learning things something new. yeah i was gonna say just learning things and trying to decipher if it's real information fake information kind of a little bold right so now we got some bats. Ooh, I like that. Do you really? I do. We get we have like a whole I almost said family. I think it's bigger than that. A little colony that flies over every morning. I mean they fly over at night too, but um I only get to see them in the morning. Yes, I did switch on purpose. I wanted to see if yeah, cool. Make sure everything's in order. 
Do you have bat houses nearby? Not, not that I'm aware of. Um, I don't know. I don't know where they live. Bats are awesome. Yep. Bats and possums. Oh, very Ella undervalued. Saw her first possum yesterday. Do what? Ella saw her first possum yesterday. Oh. I thought you said Ella ate her first possum yesterday. Oh no, that would be I was bad. Like mm, that might not be good. Yeah, no, she um, there was a baby possum in her backyard, and it was so stinking cute. That. Was it really? It, it oh my gosh, because it was little. I thought possums only have a face that a mother could love. Yeah. Well, when they're real little, they just they're I don't know. It was like a like a kitten size, and I was a little nervous for it. I was like, hopefully, it can find its mom. Um, but yeah, it <laughs> it had gotten in the backyard. <laughs> And I hope I can find its mom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry. I was just picturing like the whole outside and you're like, like there's no message boards. There's no like way to like call out to it. You're just kind of like, I'm going to wander around and hope that I can find the mom. Yep, exactly. <laughs> well, I figured, I mean, they <clears throat> can probably smell their mom, right? I have no clue. I have no yeah, clue how animals track each other, like long distances, or if you get separated when you don't have a cell phone, or you got a neighbor's house you can go to and tell them that you're missing. Yeah, that's true. I get lost a lot less now. I mean, it still happens, but um, I'm usually not nervous anymore because I do have a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. Back in our day with our maps, paper maps. Yeah, I was really good at reading maps. But my, it was funny. My mom would always, when, when I was gonna start driving, she told me that um, she was nervous that I was gonna call her one day from a payphone and tell her that I was lost, and she would ask me where I was, and I would say I don't know. <laughs> um, I never, I I did get lost so lost one time that I did need to call somebody, and I had no idea where I was. Um. <laughs> And I, I thought about, well, I went to a business and I was trying to find out where I was and they weren't very helpful and they wouldn't let me call anybody. So I just ended up figuring it out. It was a bad date. <laughs> it was a date? Yeah, <laughs> I was late. Hmm. But it turned out it wasn't, it was a bad date anyway. That wasn't even the worst part. I don't know. I can't remember ever getting... I'm trying to think if I ever got really lost. I mean, of course, we were lost. Craig, do we ever get really lost anywhere? I don't think we did. I mean, there was times we got lost, but not like lost to where we didn't know we were, where we were at. We just didn't know how to get where we were going. Which is a different problem, right? Um... You know, not knowing where you're going versus not knowing where you're currently at. Yeah. Let's we'll see what he know, says. Probably. Maybe he'll maybe he'll remember something. He says nah. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going on a public forum saying that I've ever been lost. <laughs> He's good with direction. <laughs> I don't know. Would would you admit you gotten lost? I don't. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, he's he's good with direction. Because <laughs> that's why he always drove. I've gotten lost twice on a walk, on walks, several years apart, but yeah. Um, How many times have I told you to go left or right and it was the opposite direction, Craig? <laughs> yeah, we'll do a lot. He's, he's trying to count He's them trying all. to count. He's like, he's got a, he's like, I got that on my phone. I've been recording that, yeah. like tracking that for like 20 years. Yeah. It's a lot. I always say right and mean left and the opposite. I, I'm like dyslexic. Yes, it is a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> it is. It is. It's funny because we've. It's not. It's usually after you commit to the turn too. It's like no, no, no. I meant the other way. I meant the other yeah. side direction. Uh, I still do it. Yeah, it's a lefty thing. Ah, it could be. It very well could be. That's awesome. No, I'm always like it's um turn up here or go that way, and people are always like, "What are you talking about?" 
Yeah, I, I, I never, I didn't like, I'm more of a street person kind of person, or street, street name kind of person, rather than, um, you know, what to turn at. There's like a red barn. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've said that that Brooklyn. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I guess we're both the, just we're just cool lefties. Lefties are the best. That's all. That's all it is. Yeah, Left nation. That sounds um false. Sounds false. <laughs> all right, back to our buzzing bats. Some bats buzz like wasps and bees when grasped. Hmm. Okay. The sound seems to deter predatory owls. The findings reveal what may be, for, may be the first known case of a mammal mimicking an insect. That's interesting. Uh, Mouse-eared bats in Italy, which involved capturing... The live animal, the live animals in mist, mist nets. When he and his colleagues removed the bats, they made like what is a mist net? Can you can you look that up real quick? Yeah, I'm really actually curious on that one. And uh, when his colleagues removed the bats, they made a buzzing noise in the scientist's hands, reminiscent of wasps or bees. Oh, it looks like it's a net that's like like a light mesh. Okay. Mm. Kind of like a safe net for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So they get tangled in it, but I guess it doesn't hurt them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It doesn't it, see. It probably doesn't allow them to get really tangled up in it, maybe. Maybe it just. I don't get know. There's a it. picture of a bird all tangled up. that looks like its wings are all st stuck open. So, yeah, I don't. Hmm. Um... It says they're safe, though. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it says they're well, safe. They, someone save that. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to say they're killing every other bat. So, You're right? <laughs> yeah, PETA. 50% safe. Yeah, 50% safe. <laughs> Just like, oh, never mind. I'm not going to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say a conspiracy thing. I, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're a half comedy show, right? <laughs> I was going to say just yeah. as safe as the COVID vaccine, <laughs> but yeah. that would get us in trouble probably. So yeah. Good thing that was just a joke. It's a good, <laughs> yeah, it's a good <laughs> thing you didn't actually say it. Yeah, good thing I didn't actually <laughs> say it. Uh, but it really would have just been a joke because we know it's a little safer than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, more than 50%. We hope. <laughs> Uh, oh, I was watching something else on it. It was it's interesting. Um, so uh, when you hear them, that's what comes to mind immediately. Uh, years later, the team decided to test the idea that the uncanny buzzing wasn't a mere coincidence, but instead a type of defense mechanism. So they caught some more bats <laughs> and killed some more bats, recording their buzzing cries. They were being <laughs> they were wow. while they were being handled. They also recorded the buzzing sounds of four stinging insect species, two wasps and two bees commonly found in European forests. When Russo and his team compared the audio profiles of the insect and the bat buzzing in the laboratory, the researchers found that their analysis could distinguish between the two sound sources most of the time. That feels like um, something that would be expected. Yeah. Like, okay, they're not the same. Isn't that what that just said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because it's like uh, when okay. two people can say the same thing, but they're not going to sound exactly the same either. Bats aren't bees. But... Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, I mean, <laughs> Wow. I wonder. I would want to know how much money they spent doing that. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, come on. Let, I, they I were don't... probably like, well, let's do something that we know, like our hypothesis will be true. So, <laughs> so we can feel like we did something, something extra, in case the owl thing doesn't work out. But the audience matters. Tawny owls. 
and barn owls commonly hunt bats. So Russo's team wondered if the birds could be the target for the buzzing performance. When the researchers limited their sound analysis to just the frequencies that an owl hears, the buzzes became much harder to tell apart. Particularly for comparisons involving the buzzing of European hornets are probably the bigger of them. <laughs> that thing's like wait you sound like a smaller little insect but you're big i'm confused yeah. that's a confused that's weird one. that it actually so it okay it yeah, mimicked it not. not necessarily on the audio profile but on frequencies targeted at owls yeah but it's i wonder if they do it before they get captured <laughs> Because it seems like once they're they're in there, the the owl might not be completely cool. <laughs> like, well, it sounds like a hornet, but but he looks down in his claws <laughs> and he sees this bat. <laughs> that's what that's the, that's the picture right there. He's yeah. like, it sounds like a hornet, but it looks like a bat. Hmm. Yep. Let's try the third test: taste. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, yeah. tastes like a bat, looks like a bat. We're just going to go like this bat has a sound problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Interesting. The research was semi-interesting. I'd say now that they got into the frequencies, it is kind of interesting. Yeah. So, uh, okay, sure not a waste of money. Nope. Nope, not at all. So, we go from scientists torturing bats to man ops for self-defense following kangaroo attack. Clef Dust yeah. tackled the kangaroo to the ground in self-defense in New South Wales in a New South Wales neighborhood, according to surveillance footage of a kangaroo attack posted on the YouTube channel. In the short video, Dust can be seen run frantically running frantically away from a massive kangaroo that appeared behind him. Dust then falls over and gets backed up, only to be charged by the kangaroo. As the massive animal continued to bounce towards him repeatedly, the man decided to fight back. That video. would be horrifying. Yeah. I, I, well, I'm just... I'm just <laughs> okay. Big. I'm, yeah, I'm just trying... Oh, wait. Well, it's, oh, it's, I was checking our chat. I just want to make sure we stay up on our chat chat. But um, <laughs> I don't mean to disparage anybody, but it does the 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 framing of this puts a picture in my head, and he he could be skinny, but I'm just saying a heavier set person trying to run away from a kangaroo falling. I kind of find a little funny. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it was hilarious. I, 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 I don't know. Just because it, you, any normal person's not going to be able to run away from an animal. So I don't know why you would try to run away. <laughs> like, you know, like if it's a small thing, but I would think you're not like humans don't run that fast, especially if you're not like a trained runner. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Sure is are quick. Yeah, I would well, think. Well, there was that other video that went viral a while ago. Uh, I feel like it was a couple years, a few years ago, where the guy, the kangaroo, was attacking his dog, so he punched it in the face. Yep, 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 yep. That one. Okay, like, so here we go. Let's see. Did we get a video? Oh yeah, we do. Right here. Wow, a little older too. I didn't expect that. Oh, crap! Oh, he, he looks like he got a weapon. That is horrifying. Oh, my gosh. Wow! Oh, that, that's exactly what I pictured. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what I pictured. But then it got... this. Get away. Yeah, this got way, way scarier. Glad he's smiling about that. I wonder what the, if they bite much. They, I imagine they have claws too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think you'd have to be more worried about their backs 
back feet, right? Because isn't that how they usually fight each other? They get on their tail and they kick with their back feet. Yeah. And yeah. You're you're right. That's what I believe they do. I'm just still just like fascinated by this video. This was not at all what I expected. I expected just like a uh, like a China chase into him. He fell that like the beginning part. I expected this the beginning part. Yeah, just like that. And then he gets up and it's not, you know, like he's trying to still get away. And then he just tackles it. Not like he's having like an epic battle. <laughs> the real fight. Yeah. Like, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. He's like cornered over there because there's a fence that you can see yeah. dogs inside. Yeah, I was going to so say the like, dogs like, inside the fence are like, we're trying to help. We're trying to help, human. <laughs> We hate this stupid yeah. kangaroo too. He harasses us. Now those us. dogs are little. They're probably like, "Don't let it in." <laughs> Don't let it in. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I, I would say, okay, look, look, we're gonna analyze. Because it's like a fighting game. It totally is. That could look, be look, the next new game. Look at this dog right here. Mhm. Mm Watch this dog. I think right here. See, it's trying to go after it. Yeah. It came up to this corner and was like where the guy was back. So it's obviously really trying to the dogs trying to help a couple dogs in there even though they're smaller it looked like they weren't scared either it was like team up team up teams teams can we be te what's that from i wish we could hear i want well i want to know if they're bites or they're claw marks mm. that looks like a bite oh my gosh well it could be anything oh like and everything yeah the headshot yeah. And that's so epic. That's like a real brawl. Yeah. That beats okay. the crap out of that other video. Yeah, it totally does. Like that other video should just be pulled down and this should be the new epic kangaroo <laughs> battle video. This dude needs yeah. to post it on his YouTube channel and get a couple million views on it. Because that, that's an impressive fight. Yeah. All right. All right. Dude, that was impressive. Like, I know. I don't know. My tummy hurt. Yeah, that that would have been scary. I will I will admit that would you know, one hundred percent. Another I don't, reason not to go um, go fight to, kangaroos. Yeah, well, I I there's a lot of things. I mean, I don't know if this was in Australia or it was. Well, I, yeah, that's where um I believe uh Kingsland or whatever, or Kingsland whatever it is. Yeah, I did. I didn't want to make any assumptions, but yeah, I was uh South Wales. Yeah, going, there's so many, like, spiders and other critters of a, don't, isn't that where, like, the magpies attack people also? No. <laughs> I forgot all about them. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. yeah, the kangaroos and, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sydney's in New South Wales, okay. Yeah, which is pretty much, and, yeah, Sydney and, and Melbourne are the ones you hear about the most. I don't know. I still plan on going. I still plan on going to Australia. You are? I want to. That's on the top of my list. Japan, Australia. Those are the tops. Yeah, I would like to go to Japan. Have to get my um social anxiety under control though. I feel like the best parts to visit would be also or some of the best parts would be some of the most populated also. Yeah. I was just but looking to Australia double check. Yep, Australia, Japan, are on the top of my list right now. And then, of course, the Ice Hotel up here. I think it's in Sweden. But that's all. I'd know. like to go back to Iceland, visit there, spend some time there. That would be cool. I wonder if Natalia gets to travel there much. <laughs> he says Australia animals are on par with Florida. <laughs> <laughs> like the Florida people or yeah, Florida, Florida animals? Florida That's funny. You win this round, Craig. <laughs> that that video was epic. That video was epic. Wow. Okay, we need to make you need, your next drawing needs to be us fighting a kangaroo. And failing. <laughs> yeah, of course. Access <laughs> for our eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Knocked out. <laughs> Done. With little birds tweeting around our our heads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't see that anymore. All types of Florida stuff. <laughs> That's what he said. That's awesome. He 
He's like, I gotta take my hands off the controller to type. You guys are messing up my Fortnite. Yep. That's the plan. That's actually why we started early. Just to mess with Craig. Experiment hints at why birds' nests are so sturdy. I've always, I've actually wondered that. I've always found that an interesting thing that they can build their nest and it is pretty dang sturdy really it falls out of a tree it lasts for like ever on the ground or in the tree yep and you would think you know they just go like i'm looking at the bottom of this nest so we're looking at a picture of a nest for our audio listener <laughs> he's actually in front of his computer right now so not audio but um you know what do they do they just like i'm gonna toss this stick here and then if it falls down to the ground, they go pick it up and they keep tossing it until like, is there like a little engineering degree? Do they got to go to engineering school for a little while? Probably. Try to figure this out. Well, if they don't get it right, then they don't nest, right? Like, isn't that the, well, I don't know for all birds. I think some birds do it as a pair, but like, I think some birds don't, isn't that like the male's job? And if they want to get a female, then they have to do it right. Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds about right. Hurt, then you're not gonna. Yeah, um, you know, we always we always baby. query those females to make sure our building projects are accurate. Yep. <laughs> Is this good enough? And they're like, Please. Rick, Rick, where you at, Rick? <laughs> He's building a nest. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> I was just like, the, the ladies over there, are like. She's eating, she's getting, you know, she's getting her nutrients up for her upcoming egg laying, right? And, mm -hmm. and he, the guy's over there building his nest, and he's like, try, he's trying so hard. He's like trying his best. He's throwing sticks and like, you know, some like grass and stuff. And it's, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying so hard is what he tells her. And she comes over and she's like, honey, and she's just shaking her head. And she's like, how about you just go play in the stream? And I'll finish this for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And little did she know that was his tactic the whole time. So then he goes out and hangs out with his friends the rest of the day. And he can build his nest. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. And he will be a bachelor that year. <laughs> Craig says, not that tree, the one over there. <laughs> this one's facing south. It's not my good side. <laughs> when everybody comes over and sees the new babies, they won't they won't have good light. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> that feels right. <clears throat> now, the other thing is he's building it next to like some kind of animal that eats birds. And he's like, honey, it'll be okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> kind of sending her off for uh, not uh, her own demise. Just owls over there. No big deal. Alright, so how do they do it? <laughs> your face is so evil right now. And you're muted. Alright, she must be talking to somebody else yelling at her dogs or something. I don't know. I'm gonna stand up. I'm tired of sitting. So a bird's nest is a special version of a granular. Oh, well, I'm getting all calls. That's cool. Um, a granular material, a substance such as sand, made up of many sub smaller objects. What? Did I mute you? Wink eye? Craig, can you hear? We lost half our audio feed. Oops. I'm typing to her now, folks. Says her Discord isn't working. Am I 
guess I don't need to tell her that I can't here. So now, now that we got rid of the riffraff for the show, me and Craig can run the show. Rude. Oh, take it, take it, take it. I was just recruiting Craig to be the co-host. <laughs> So bad, so bad. That's hilarious. So you can hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. At least I can. I don't know. I don't know if the audio. Well, that's can. better than before. Yeah, because I was talking and and you were like, I you weren't answering me, and then you said that you can. I figured I was surprised I didn't get a response for the male trying to kill the female bird. But... Yeah, I was talking. <laughs> um. <laughs> I also asked if we could have a, a quick a quick break because I yeah it's break know, time anyway yeah and you just kept talking I was like wait I but and then that's when I realized you couldn't hear me <laughs> I was like why are you ignoring me right now <laughs> well, you know that's a cool thing to do so yeah it totally is that's fair all right break time yep we'll be back in five or so. Hello. Thank you for that quick break. Quick break's over. Quick break is over. I'm getting hungry. Funny, I wanted to. Um, I always want to say recalibrating during recalibrating, <laughs> but you know you yeah. can't talk while you're recalibrating, so it's <laughs> like I mouth the words once in a while, and then I'm like, God, I gotta recalibrate again. No, recalibrate, re recalibrate. <laughs> See, it's still looking weird. All right, man, that was my favorite so far has been that kangaroo. Man, I can't get that yeah, out of my head. Was, that was a good one. So, we'll start, we never really did figure out how they build their stuff. So. Uh, in the experiments, a piston repeatedly compressed 460 bamboo rods scattered inside a cylinder. The computer simulations let researchers analyze the points where sticks touched. Yeah, uh, let's see. Changes in the pile's stiffness seem to lie behind the piston's motion. A phenomenon. What? I don't even know. What? I don't understand this at all. I don't either. 
Okay. Uh, individual stick will translate into the characteristics. Blah, blah, blah. Bird's nest is a special version of a granular material, a substance such as sand made up of many smaller objects. King and colleagues combined laboratory experiments and, and computer simulations to better understand the quirks of nest-like granular materials. Okay, whatever. I'm not a fan of this article at all. I mean, our discussion around it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did better than the article. But, um, yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, it I, makes sense. We've all like put sticks together, and you know, the more you weave things around, the sturdier it gets, and it starts to hold its shape, and then you just keep doing that over and over again. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I thought they were gonna. I thought like our other stuff, our other articles, are gonna go into some kind of cool little quirk that they found, like the buzzing of the bats to ward off owls. I mean, that's kind of cool. You know, the salamanders jumping out of trees and kind of flailing themselves around. But here they're like, "All right, we're gonna just recreate what birds do and test its strength." And everybody would know that you just pile more stuff up on it on each other, it's gonna get somewhat stronger, right? Yeah. We're not talking yeah, like, it, oh, go ahead. I was just thinking like even those, what is it, the Asian pears and they're in that little nest thing. And even though that's not super sturdy, it's still there to protect. I mean, we use, we create nest type things to, <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> to this protect one. Our, <laughs> our things already. Yeah, this one, uh, um, I was waiting for some massive insight on how they actually yeah. build their nest. Like the. Like there's some kind of pattern that we found that they always use, or they always do it this. No, whatever. Like they have um plans. Yeah, like they have plans. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like a blueprint. Like I don't know. I would like to see the beginnings of the nest to see if there's a certain way that you get the bottom started. You know, things like that. But, nope, we didn't get any of that. Okay. So moving on. Ooh, to our favorite people. This is Science Science Daily that gives us a source and a summary. And a date, all at the very top. Amazing. Great white sharks may have contributed to megalodon extinction. Do, do, do. <laughs> this shark looks mad. He's yeah. Crying. He's got, like, mad eyes. Megalodon is upset. He's really yeah. mad at the little great like, white sharks. I was here first. Yeah. Exactly. The diet of fossil extinct animals can hold clues to their lifestyle, behavior, evolution, and ultimately extinction. However, studying an animal's diet after millions of years is a little difficult due yeah. to poor preservation of chemical dietary indicators. Well, yeah. yeah I think that, if they're, feels, that feels fair. Yeah, I was going to say, if their stomach's working correctly, <laughs> then <laughs> they would have digested stuff. Yep. Um, so, an international team. It's always international because people work best together instead of in isolated groups, right? Yep. You take all your varied learnings and apply them together and come up with awesome research. And so, what'd they find? Um, yeah, Megalodon lived between 23 and 3.6 million years ago. Yeah, he's super huge. 20 meters in length, and for those that operate in feet, feet that's 60-ish feet. Oh, I was gonna ask. I think the rough conversion is three feet per meter, something like that. Huh. Um, many factors, and anybody can correct us in chat if they want to. Uh, I would rather be accurate than wrong. Accurate than right. Yep, either way. Whatever. I don't know how to talk today. I'd just rather be accurate, so correct me if I'm wrong. Many factors have been discussed. What's the, what, what was it? What was it? The height of the Great White. Uh, okay, so modern and isotope, zinc stable isotope ratios in shark teeth around the globe. This new method allows scientists to investigate the animal's tropic bubble which indicates how far up the food chain the animal feeds. Oh, okay. Zinc stable isotope analysis of tooth enameloid. <laughs> the, oh. 
Do they just want to make enamel cooler? Enamelloid? Yeah. The highly mineralized part of the teeth is comparable to much more established nitrogen isotope analysis of teeth. Blah, 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 blah. However, on time scales, we investigate collagen is not preserved. Okay, okay. Here we just demonstrate for the first time that diet related to zinc isotope signatures are preserved in highly mineral. Okay. Uh, using this new method, they compared the zinc isotope signatures to old sharks and new sharks. We noticed a coherence of zinc isotope signals in fossil and modern analog. Blah, blah, blah. A bunch of big words. Um, <laughs> okay. So, we're, it's a good article. There's lots of good science words. These results <laughs> likely imply that at least some overlap in prey hunted by both shark species. While additional research is needed, our research results appear to support the possibility for dietary competition of megalodon with early Pliocene great white Pliocene. sharks. Pliocene? Pliocene. 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 There you go. <laughs> okay. New I isotope. Learned that about eons. Oh, you did? Oh, so you, you actually are confident in your pronunciation. You didn't just sound it out. You know it. Cool. Yeah. Pliocene. They talk about the hair. Yeah. So when is it? How long ago was it, Miss Expert? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> it wasn't like 10 to 15 oh. million years ago? No. Well, but it I'm was gonna... what? 1 to 3 million? I'm looking it up now. Pliocene hair. Or epoch. Um, 5, 4 to 2.4 ago so again you were you were going robotic oh sad face uh it was 5.4 to 2.4 million years ago okay so not too long really no in in the scale of millions yeah <laughs> and billions of yeah. earth age <laughs> yeah so. yeah uh consider well what did it say uh megalodons are around from 23 to 3.4 million years yeah 3.6 million yeah, yeah that's a <laughs> They were around a lot longer than they haven't been around, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there was just a couple million years of overlap, which was enough yeah. time for the smaller, faster, probably more agile sharks mm -hmm. to consume the food source of Megalodon, because Megalodon probably needed to eat quite a bit of food. Yep. And if you've done any marine video watching or research yourself, you can see that big giant things can't turn very quick and smaller more nimble things um, do ha sometimes have an advantage so yep uh what it was, that's proven with what the orcas and large whales right i'd say so something like that where the orcas when they when they attack stuff they can go after bigger stuff because it can't really fend off can't yeah. get away well, can't really do much the big whales even and, oh, and the same when the dolphins attack sharks, right? Because mm -hmm. even though they're bigger, they just like, you know, they're quick and they can turn, so then sharks can't really do much about it. Yeah, they bully sharks, like, did you know that? The, get in the bitey part. <laughs> they do. I, I watched I watched the whole <laughs> little thing about dolphins just hating on sharks. Hating on sharks. They They totally bully them, too, just for fun. For funsies. It is, it is. Dolphins are also evil. <laughs> They're the mean girls. <laughs> they are so mean. And then orcas too. Yeah. But Yeah, orcas are like, You're on land? That's okay. Here I come. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm on land. <laughs> that would be horrifying. <laughs> it would be. be. Alright. The decoy effect. What is it and how to make it work for you? What is the decoy effect? When people talk about the decoy effect, they are referring to asymmetric decoys. Okay, I was going to read the first part, which is the cool little lead up. Every retailer is interested in increasing their turnover or maximizing the sales of a particular product at some point or other. And one way of doing this is by using decoy products. A decoy product is an option that when added to a choice set alters the relative attractiveness 
of other alternatives in the set and causes a customer to switch their choice from one option to a more expensive or profitable one. It is not intended to sell, just nudge customers toward a certain item by showing them a slightly worse alternative. I see that all the time. So like putting um, like a yellow mayonnaise next to a white mayonnaise? You're like, hmm, that one doesn't look good. I was that thinking about, well, one, sales where you have um, buy one, get one 50% off or something. Or you have, um, I was also thinking more of in the line of like small, medium, large, where they make the price difference to bump up to the next one, not so much, right? So then you get kind of convinced into the larger one, what seems like a relatively smaller price but for cost of goods sold wouldn't be any really relatively low, you know, percentage increase. So like filling up a soda cup, like when I go and get a frosty from Wendy's is where I often think of it. And it's like, you can get your small for like $3 or something. I'm just making up dollar amounts because I don't know. I don't go there that much. So I don't know exactly how much <laughs> it costs. And, and I don't ever get a small because it's too small. I tried this once. And then to get to the medium, Maybe it's um, a dollar more, right? So let's go to four dollars. But then to get to the large, it's only four twenty nine or so. It's thirty cents bump from the medium to the large. But like they know that the small is too small for most people, so most people are going to go into the medium. But then when you see that a large is only a few cents more, then you just go to the large. You know, so they've convinced you into spending more money. This is what I'm thinking. This effect is. And they've convinced you into spending more money, even though you would have been just fine with the medium at the medium price. That's what I was kind of, th that's my example in my head. How about you? Yeah, no, that makes sense to me. I always just get, not always. I've had, um, you know, like the buy one, get one free and stuff like that. And I won't get the extra one because I'm not going to use it. Or the next size up is too much, even if it's less or... Um, just a little bit more like like the price difference you really would be saving money by getting the bigger one but I'm like I if it's food related then I try not to get the bigger because I know I'm not going to eat it <laughs> like no I don't know it's just it you know when you're saying it like that it is it does remind me of how many times people have been like well don't you want this other thing it's like it's on sale or it's this really good deal you're gonna miss it I'd rather miss it. Thank you. Yep, and that's it. <clears throat> so, one of the most well-known examples was described by psychologist Dan Airely, who noticed something odd about the Economist magazine subscription options, an internet-only subscription for $59, print and internet subscription for $125, and a print-only subscription for $125. He wondered why the magazine would offer a print only option for the same price as the print and internet one. So he asked a hundred of his students to pick one of the three options. 16 chose the internet only subscription and the other 84 did the print and internet. He then took away the print only subscription, which no one had picked anyways. And he asked his students to choose again. <clears throat> this time, 68 of them chose the cheaper internet option and 32 of them the print and internet option. The print only decoy had made 52 people buy the most expensive option, netting a hypothetical profit of $3,000, $3,400. So this, this is probably a better example because they're bundling more into something to make you think you're getting more value. Yeah, but that goes back to what I was saying. It's mm -hmm. like, well, now you have to recycle a print. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. The and then, time. and that's like such a, to me, it's such a waste. So then I, I would be with the other people, the first sixteen that were like, internet only. Well, I would have just, yeah, I would have went with internet only just because I wouldn't have wanted print. But this is illustrating that there's you're convinced in that you're getting a better deal. Mm-hmm. Because you say, well, if this one costs the same, I might I should just get this because then I'm getting two things. 
Yeah. But then when this yeah, guy's like, removed, go ahead. I was just thinking like, yeah, you if somebody likes the print, but then they're like, well, I often go on vacation and I don't want the print. Then, <laughs> then I could still read the internet. I don't know. Yep. It seems silly. Well, but it does make sense. I think that's why you go to school, though, right? For critical thinking. I feel like that's like the main reason that anybody should go to school. To learn not to be hoodwinked. <laughs> this isn't a better deal. Yep. Think about it. Think about it. So they found that decoys were most effective when they extended the target's weakest dimension, making its deficit in that dimension seem less important. Say you are selling beer. You have two different beers on offer. Beer A, beer B. Right now, there is a trade-off between price and quality, and each year customers chooses according to which attribute, attribute they find most important. But would you like to sell more of beer A? So you would add a third choice, the decoy. Beer C, which costs the same <laughs> price but has oh, a lower yeah. rating. That's why, um, was it nat um, naturalized or whatever? Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now beer A's quality rating is in the middle rather than the bottom set. Additionally, the decoy has increased the range of the quality attribute from 20, oh, from 20 to 30 making it a 20 point advantage of beer B over beer A seems smaller. Uh, there is also a special type of asymmetric decoy, the phantom decoy, which dominates the target product, but is unavailable at the time of choice. These tend to work best when they are more attractive than the target on its best dimension. Just as good as the other dimension, using, using our beer example, we want to sell more of the superior craft beer, B. We would use beer D, which is $2.60 for an 80, but it's out of hey, stock. Huh? I'm back. You were gone? Yep. <laughs> I didn't I know, notice. I know, turd. No, because I was like, uh, when it was doing the cheap beer, I was like, oh, is that like natural ice? And you said, I heard that part. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, we heard the natural ice comment, and that's why we didn't think anything was up. <laughs> so funny. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a slick little tactic. I missed it. So now they introduced a fourth beer to try to sell more of the higher end beer. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get it on one screen, but I can't. Oh, maybe if I get this off. So they entered a one that cost the same as beer B, but had a higher rating. And it's out of stock. So it seems like it's super popular, but then there's one just slightly less for the same price and everybody buys it. Because many customers feel compelled to get the next best. And they work because of violation of rationality. A person is presented with two items and thinks item A is better than B until they're presented with a third option. And suddenly they decide item B is better than item A. That makes no sense. So why do decoys work? Making decisions between two items is a stressful business. There are all, there are all those different attributes to evaluate, values to remember, conditions, combinations to consider setter importance to weigh the decoy takes the stress away by highlighting which are attributes the customer should focus on and making it easier for them to justify the choice of the dominating option the target because it is so obviously better than the dominated option the decoy the fact having to justify one's choice increases the decoy's effect as the focus of the decision is shifted from a choice of good options to a choice of good reasons for selecting that option. I want to start using, we have to go to the grocery store later today. I'm also wondering, like, if we were falling for this while house hunting. Because it's like, 
uh, we've been looking in this area that has, you know, we can get a nice house on like a half acre. Well, we just have been recently looking like about 20 minutes north of there. And we're finding houses about the same price, but now you're getting, you're looking at acres instead of like half acres or quarter acres. Um, but then the commute is over an hour instead of, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So then it's like, I don't know. I know it's not quite the same, but yeah, I can see this. Interesting. Interesting. Like, is that what we really want? doing it yep me too let's see what do we got left we got a few minutes oh we got time for one more or maybe two oh, that one's interesting too okay we can choose this is just going to be the quick vote between the three of us since <laughs> i believe there's only three of us <laughs> so we we have um Aliens are all hanging out on a Dyson Spheres circling white dwarfs. We got a study examines why memory of fear is seared into our brains. Ooh. Minecraft's code writing AI points to the future of computers. And why Uranus and Neptune different colors why is uranus a different color i just wanted to say uranus <laughs> i know they say it different nowadays to help uranus yeah i know they it's funny because it's like now it's uranus <laughs> it will always be uranus forever, forever. or ever yeah. i don't mind mispronouncing that so what do you got fear we gotta vote for fear i yeah i'm voting for fear as well. all right so we're going fear We'll cover the other ones later. Maybe. Maybe we lost them forever and ever. Who knows? No, I will wonder forever why your anus is a different color. I don't know. Somebody painted it different. They liked blue. No. Neuroscientists have been studying the formation of fear memories in the emotional hub of the brain. The amygdala? In... in you know, I've heard the word. I got it going through my head, but Amnidala. The amygdala. I'm like so close. I can't switch it. That's a hard word. Yeah. Amygdala. Don't know. The memory part of your brain. <laughs> Experiencing a frightening event is likely something you'll never forget. But why does it stay with you when all other when other kinds of occurrences become increasingly difficult to recall with the passage of time? I don't know. A team of neuroscientists from Tulane University School of Science and Engineering and Tufts University School of Medicine have been, scu been studying studying the formation of fear memories in emotional hub in the emotional hub of the brain. The word we can't pronounce. And they think they have a mechanism. In a nutshell, the researchers found that the stress neurotransmitters, transmitter norofininefrine, I don't know, wow. No <laughs> rep, I don't even know how to do that one. Like, also known as no adrenaline. Yeah, whatever. Hmm. Uh, that one's a little easier to say. Yeah. We know two of those. Nor adrenaline, nor adrenaline. So we got nor epinephrine. Epinephrine? Epinephrine. Uh, epinephrine? Oh, oh, okay. There we go. We're going to go with that. Nor epinephrine, also known as nor adrenaline, facilitates fear. <laughs> like negative <laughs> adrenaline? What's <Yeah. laughs> that? Is, it, no. is that like a not or gate or something? A nor gate? For logic gates? No. Never mind. Sorry. Computer programming mean? stuff. What? <laughs> you, you would know that. I was like, you, you. When I explain it later, you'll you'll be like, yeah. Okay. So facilitates fear processing in the brain by simulating a certain population of inhibitory neurons in the amnugala. But there's a D in there. I gotta 
to get that D in somehow. To generate. Amygdala? Amygdala. Amygdala. Yeah, let's go with that. Amygdala. It looks about right. Did you Google it or did you just come up with that? No. I just came up with it. Awesome. <laughs> That's why I yelled it. <laughs> <laughs> amygdala. I got it. I got it. The amygdala. Um, to generate a repetitive bursting pattern of electrical discharges. This bursting pattern of electrical activity changes the frequency of brainwave oscillation in the amygdala. Let's say it again. Amygdala? Amygdala. Yeah, see, I keep wanting to do it the other way. Amygdala. You can only say it like that, though. <laughs> From a resting state to an aroused state that promotes the formation of fear memories. Tasker used the example of an armed robbery. If you are held up at gunpoint, your brain secretes a bunch of the stress neurotransmitter nor epinephrine, epinephrine, whatever, akin to an adrenaline rush. This changes the electrical discharge pattern in specific circuits in your emotional brain centered in the... Amygdala? Yeah, this is, that's like your word, so I'm just going to let you say it every time. <laughs> Which, in turn, transitions the brain into a state of heightened arousal that facilitates memory formation, fear memory, since it's scary. This is the time, the same process we think that goes awry in PTSD and makes you so, makes it so you cannot forget traumatic experiences. Hmm. This makes sense. And that's it. I like their articles. Theirs are my favorite. They yep. give you all the information. It's nice, short, to the point, no fluff. Yeah, but they, they have the hardest words, too. Yeah, they do. Amygdala. <laughs> that was really hard. That was a really hard one. <laughs> it was. Well, same with the nor epinephrine. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get that one. Yeah. I like them. But, they make me smarter. Science Daily. Yep, thanks, Silence Daily. Yeah, thanks, Science Daily, for providing <laughs> excellent articles, not putting up a bunch of stupid stuff that makes us, like, only be able to read one article a day. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is nice. It's nice that you don't have tons of ads that pop up all over the place. I was going to say no ads, but there's, I guess. <laughs> there's clearly ads. <laughs> yeah, complete balanced nutrition. <laughs> Life insurance can be life-changing. Call me. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining. Yep. Um, it was... Literally, we just got somebody that hopped on. It's Thank probably everybody know. that thought that it starts at 8. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Yeah, we it's fair. Last night started early. What do you mean, last night? This was planned. It was up on our website for weeks. Oh, yeah. Starting at 6.30. Yep. All right? Everybody Maybe checks we our website. That I did last night. Shh. <laughs> We prepared. Oh, yeah. We prepared. So nobody's ever gonna believe that. Yeah. See, even on our website, it says starts at six thirty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> changed it during the show. <laughs> I think I changed it during the first break. <laughs> uh, maybe before the show. I forget. So Wednesday, we're gonna continue our discussion on helping businesses with blockchain. And um, I better do this. Let's see. Let's do this real quick so that everybody can see. Um, I need to do this. And let's switch the date here. And we don't know what we got yet. We'll find a title here really soon. And save it. What? Nothing. I watch this. This is cool. Oh. I love. See. I was trying to do. I was adding. So, just to remind Six everybody. What, yeah, we got another T ball game. Yeah. Until I think there's one or two more T balls. I think we go through June. I don't know. Okay. That works so, out for me. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot going on here, too. So, that's why everybody that's tuned in will now know it's going to start at 6 30 next week, also. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're going to have we just bumped our time up to the six mark. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Bye. Stop button now. <laughs>